What's up guys, Rick here with your sleepers for this week's tour championship. And this is going to be a little bit different than usual, right? There's only 30 golfers in the field. In theory, all of them have been playing well. I mean, they've gotten to this point. There's a few guys that have not been playing well. Uh, and, you know, the pricing is all over the place. There's only really a handful of guys that I think can actually win this golf tournament. So hopefully I can just present a couple of angles, a couple of things that you may not have considered or that may fly under the radar for this week's Tour Championship. Uh, let's not waste any more time. Let's let's jump right into this. Let's start with Billy Horschel. Does Billy Horschel even count as a sleeper? I don't know. He certainly counts as a long shot. He's 200 to 1 to win this golf tournament. What what I think is more interesting is that he's actually only 25 to 1 to win this golf tournament without the strokes. So Billy Horschel is going to start the week at even par. He's going to be 10 shots off the lead. It would be unbelievable if he could find a way to win this golf tournament from 10 shots back, but he could win this golf tournament without the strokes. And the success at the Tour Championship for Billy Horschel is certainly well documented. He has a 7th place finish in 2013. He won it back in 2014 and he won the FedEx Cup. And then he finished 2nd in 2018. That was the Tiger Woods. <clears throat> so when you put all of these things together and you look at Billy's recent play where uh, he's been playing well. He's been hitting his irons well. We know he can get a scorching hot putter at any moment. He is one of these guys that I think is kind of interesting from 25 to 1 without the strokes or to be one of the golfers to fly up the leaderboard starting at even par. Mackenzie Hughes. If you have been listening to anything I do all week long, you know I've been banging the drum for Mackenzie Hughes, who is 400 to 1 to win this golf tournament with strokes. He's 80 to 1 to win it without strokes, and he is, in my opinion, the one guy in the $5,000 range on DraftKings that is most likely to fly up the leaderboard. And be the guy who really unlocks a lot of the winning upside in a GPP. And there's a couple of reasons that I think that. I will say the way Hughes plays, his style is usually not a style that I'm interested in. He's kind of a short game specialist. It saves him from time to time. But the more difficult golf courses you get on, the more valuable that short game becomes. And it's proven true. Uh, at Olympia Fields, Mackenzie Hughes finished in a tie for 10th. At Muirfield Village, Mackenzie Hughes finished in a tie for 6th. And at PGA National, the Honda Classic, Hughes finished runner-up to Sung J M. I mean, those are three of the more difficult golf courses that we see on the PGA Tour every single year. Eastlake, in, in all likelihood, as it always does, is going to play firm and fast. It's going to be difficult. It was 14th in difficulty out of 49 courses on the PGA Tour last year. So you're looking at a guy who not only play, plays difficult golf courses very well, but he has the ability to really leapfrog a lot of people. He has the ability to finish in a top 10 of a full field playoff event or in a full field. I mean, the Memorial is a perfect example. Uh, an absolute stacked field of the best players in the world. Mackenzie Hughes finds his play, finds his name on the first page of the leaderboard. So to me, uh, he is the one guy that I think unlocks a lot of the magic down at the bottom of the DFS player pool for this week. Sebastian Munoz is going to start two under par, and I have his ownership for the week on DraftKings coming in at less than 12%. Now, I'm certainly no stand for Sebastian Munoz, but I understand what he offers. And he offers a, a little bit of upside with a, a guy who's playing pretty well at the moment. He finished 18th at the Northern Trust. He finished 8th at the BMW Championship. The week before those, the Wyndham Championship, the final week of the regular season, he was fine after the first two rounds. He was, uh, I think, in 25th or 26th before faltering a bit on the weekend. And that's really the thing with Sebastian Munoz is it is consistency. Is he going to be able to put it together for four rounds? Because we know the skill set can be there for nine or 18 holes at a time. He went on that run to start the Northern Trust where he birdied seven holes in a row to begin his Thursday rounds. That's what you can get out of Seb Munoz. Now, can he hang, can he hang on for 72 holes? 
We're going to find out, uh, but a couple of really good finishes and a guy who's starting in two under par, which is, you know, some of these other sleepers are at one under at even par. Uh, Munoz is really interesting for $5,900 on DraftKings, especially for a guy who's won on the PGA Tour this season. He's raised the trophy this season. It feels like a decade ago, uh, but he's done it and he's playing well at the moment and he has all that birdie upside. I like Munoz to be an under-owned, overlooked option this week. Can we just shout out my guy, Lonto Griffin? Lonto Griffin, $5,600 on DraftKings. And what I really like from him, uh, he has a 10th place finish at the BMW Championship. That's Olympia Fields. That was last week. Uh, two starts pre previous to that, 19th place finish at Harding Park for the PGA Championship. So you're looking at, um, in his last three starts, two of them have been top 20s, and those two are on the more difficult courses that we saw because Lonto is a bit of a grinder. I'm not sure he ever wins a golf tournament that gets to 25 or 28 under par, something like that, but something in the low single digits under par, that is really where Lonto Griffin tends to thrive, and his his floor is actually pretty high. This is what I've been talking about for so long, where he's been where he piles up top 20s, top 25 so often, it's because he gains strokes in all four of the major strokes gain categories, which allows you to have a very high floor because if one thing goes wrong, you're not cooked for the week. You can rely on your other skill sets and you can find yourself in the top 25 when things don't go perfectly. And then when things do go really well, you can find yourself in the top 10 or like you did at the Houston Open, you can find yourself in the winner's circle. So Lonto Griffin, another sub 6K golfer on DraftKings. I have his projected ownership a little bit less than 20%. Remember that you're, there's only 30 players in this field, so that's pretty low owned. Uh, I, I think he's someone who can certainly help your lineups this week uh, from a very value position. And finally, I don't have another sleeper player for you, but how about a sleeper stat? Because I think it's going a bit under the radar that Hideki Matsuyama has now gained strokes putting in three consecutive events. And if you know anything about Hideki, that is no small feat. Uh, you see him grinding constantly on the putting green. He's, he's using all types of devices and doing all types of drills. Well, if he has figured it out just a little bit, if he can be just a tour average putter for the next extended period of time Hideki's going to find a lot of success because he's one of the best ball strikers on the planet we know he can contend and he can win in short field uh tough courses I mean he won at the memorial a couple of years ago he's won WGC events uh in his career so those are no cut smaller fields so this is right up Hideki's alley this week and I think he can really provide um some value especially if he continues to roll the rock the way he has over the last three events there you go four sleepers and like a low-key sleeper stat for you for this week's tour championship uh, i hope you enjoy that it is so different with only 30 golfers in the field it's going to be a lot of fun best of luck this week and i'll talk to you guys soon